Good Sunday evening, everybody. I'm meteorologist Tim Pandages here with your Atlantic Tropical Update. We're still talking about Hurricane Larry and Invest 91L, a tropical wave situated right now over the Yucatan, about to head into the Gulf of Mexico slowly over the next couple days. Today is September 5th, 2021. Let's start out with a big feature, and that is Hurricane Larry, a Category 3. It's been plateaued pretty much at a Category 3 status for the last few days. Winds right now of 125, so a higher-end Category 3. It goes all the way up to 129-mile-an-hour winds before we uh, go over to a Category 4. Very impressive looking on satellite features. This is a 48-hour loop. So you can see it playing on out and building off to the west northwest and if you look closely at that eye it became very large earlier today in excess of 70 miles in diameter and then it starts to shrink a little bit it's undergoing its third eye wall replacement cycle and this is also a time frame a window that opens for some possible weakening and some dry air that's off towards the west that could get entrained to the system. A closer look here, you can see the convection flaring all the way around the outer sides of the eye wall there. Very strong winds, of course, 125 miles, miles per hour, gusts up and over 140. Now here's what's going on in the overall region where Larry currently is. It's a TUT, and what this is, it's an acronym, Tropical Upper Tropospheric, Tropical Upper Tropospheric Trough. That's what I'm trying to say there. That is a touch. So basically what this is, it's a trough. It's an area of low pressure, and that is imparting some westerly to southwesterly shear on the system itself. And that's also allowing this tongue of dry air that you can see here on the water vapor imagery, the rust color, to possibly wear down that westernmost eye wall and maybe get entrained to the system. That's during its eye wall replacement cycle. Once that gets completed, we'll have a larger eye that emerges in likely a period of strengthening uh, that will follow that. Larry continues to be a very large system. System, about 800 miles in diameter overall and its eye although a little bit smaller now still at 60 miles earlier today it was like 70 75 miles and typically the eye is 20 to 40 miles across so it's still larger than average eye and that got me thinking I wonder what the largest eye ever on record was you know what it was 230 miles wide that's like going from Washington DC all the way up to New York City and being in the eye the entire time if you're in Philadelphia and say there's this massive storm here and the eye is sitting right here, Philadelphia would be snap, smack dab in the middle of that. Skies would be clear and sunny. Winds would be calm. You wouldn't know you'd be in the middle of a hurricane. And those were both by typhoons, Carmen and Winnie, one in 1960 and one in 1997. 230 miles across. Massive. Larry's eye, 60 miles. Nothing, a fraction of that. All right, Larry's wind field is quite big, though. Last update brought the uh, tropical storm force winds extending out about 150 miles from the center. Hurricane is going to be in the red there. That's where you're finding winds at least 74 miles an hour. That extends out about 40 miles. So overall, not that much of an impressive wind field. And of course, it's not near any land masses, so nothing to worry about there. It's what we call a fish storm. The next track here from the Hurricane Center as of 4 o'clock still keeps it to the east of Bermuda by the time we get towards, uh, say, the middle of this upcoming week. By this point, a Category 2 storm by Thursday afternoon, still with winds of 110 miles an hour. Now, the dirty side of the storm is always going to be the east of the center. We're going to find the strongest winds coming in from the north because you factor in the forward movement of the storm as well as the overall peak wind speeds. They're going to be stronger in that east side or the front right quadrant. If it's moving due north, that's going to be the northeast quadrant there. They'll be on the back side here in Bermuda. Still going to see some impacts, rough surf, some gusty winds, certainly, and maybe even some of the outermost rain bands. But overall, it looks like it could be a miss for Bermuda. Now, Bermuda is located right in Hurricane Alley, and since 1854, these are all the storms that have passed within 50 miles of Bermuda. There's been 58 storms. Landfalls, very small little island nation there. Storms are very large, and it's hard to hit it right on with the eye moving right over the center of the island, but it has happened. In fact, it happened last year with Hurricane Paulette. That was a Category 2 storm in 2020. So just some climatology there for you. All right, on its trek forward, Larry's got some very warm sea surface temperatures. I mean, pretty much anywhere you go in the Atlantic Basin, those numbers are running above average and above the threshold we need, which is 80 degrees Fahrenheit to facilitate the latent heat release and the tropical development mid 80s here on its forecast path forward. On top of that, the ocean heat content, especially here in the next day or two, is pretty impressive. That means that that heat extends down to a depth, and as storms mix up the ocean, something called upwelling, they're going to mix up 
more and more warm waters here until it gradually builds to the north. Still some pretty impressive ocean heat content for this latitude, but not as much it is as it is off to the south. Now, wave action is going to be a big deal for Bermuda and eventually emanating out towards the west to the east coast of the United States. We're talking wave heights near the center here, up in over 30, 35, 40 foot waves. And some of that's 10, 12, 15 foot wave heights, making it all the way to the east coast there. So rip current risk is going to be up for the next several days, as well as coastal erosion and some heavy surf there as well. Maybe even some coastal flooding at times of high tide. The probability of it seeing at least hurricane force winds towards Bermuda. There's Bermuda right there. We've got low chances of that. So that's some good news there. Remember that wind field for the hurricane force winds only extends out about 40 miles. And it looks like the track will be more than 40 miles off to the east of Bermuda. All the models are pretty much in line here. The steering patterns are pretty solid. We've got an area of low pressure off towards the east there, another one to the west, and that's picking it up and lifting it to the north. As you can see here on the upper level steering patterns, ridge of high pressure, ridge of high pressure, trough dipping on here, and that's a weakness pulling it off towards the north and keeping it away from most everybody aside from Bermuda and maybe Atlantic Canada as we get into the later parts of this upcoming week, maybe in the next weekend. Another feature out there, this is Invest 91L. Quick refresher on what Invest means. Investigative area is what Invest is short for. 91 is uh, just a number that we go from 90 to 99 and then kind of cycle it through. And the L dictates that it is in the Atlantic Basin. This is just an area of disturbed weather, an open wave over the Yucatan right now. Most of it was over the Bay of Campeche yesterday. It is starting to build its way north. Conditions marginally conducive for it to develop, which is why it's got about a 30% chance of development within the next five days. Doesn't look like much on satellite imagery. We're looking at infrared here. The colder cloud tops will indicate higher convection or stronger convection activity. We're not really seeing much of it. Sure, a flare up of some diurnally driven storms here, daytime heating, but not much here that shows anything really organizing. Maybe a broad overall rotation, but that's about it. And look at how slowly it's moving. It's crawling to the north, but as it eventually does build north, it'll be moving into the very warm ocean waters. Remember, in the eastern side of the Gulf, that's where Ida went through, so temperatures have dropped a little bit. Ida extracted that heat energy from the ocean, so dropped it a few degrees. Still warm enough for tropical development, but it's much, much warmer that's been undisturbed by tropical systems here in the western Gulf of Mexico where water temperatures are in the upper 80s to near 90. Anything that does drift into these waters has a higher chance of developing than otherwise would be. And the computer models here you see are all over the place. It's because there's no closed center of circulation. The models are basically looking at the satellite imagery, looking at the data and saying, oh, I wonder where the center is. And they just plot it where, wherever they think it is and then go from there. Slow movement. Not much steering going on here, but eventually as it builds north, it'll get into those warm waters. And take note of these models that get to the Gulf Coast and then kind of split directions like they're hitting a wall. That's because the steering that's going to be in place at that point in time should steer Texas clear of the system, but it may bring a very heavy rain event to areas of the central and eastern Gulf Coast. As this builds north, we have a weak boundary, a cold front that's dropping on through behind that ridging building over the Rockies. Now, this frontal boundary, although weak and washing out as it drops to the south, will be in place. And what that will do as this system builds north, it'll help to enhance the rainfall and, and spread it out over a larger area and slow its forward movement as well. So any moisture that does build north spreading out, Lasting longer, moving slower, that means a heavy rainfall, flooding potential for areas here that got impacted by Ida and even off towards Mississippi, Alabama and the Florida coastline through the panhandle there. So that's the latest on both Invest 91L, Hurricane Larry. If there's any other updates for you, we'll bring it to you latest here. But until then, enjoy the rest of your Labor Day holiday weekend. You can find me on social media if you have any questions, uh, Twitter, Instagram and on Facebook.